Hello, this is Daniel from KCI Allied Health, and this is a video directed towards VCE students on how to manage thumb and wrist pain after all that writing you have to do. First thing I'd like you to think about, don't push too hard with your pen. If you're leaving indentations in the paper, you're putting too much pressure on it. Now, if this is a habit for you, have a think about changing your pen. You can try a fine tip pen that doesn't require much physical pushing. You could switch to a mechanical pencil if that works for you. Or you could even try a fountain pen, which don't require any pushing at all. But uh, watch out for them. They spray ink if you shake them. Next thing to think about, the way you hold your pen. Don't hold it like this, or this. This is what you want to do. The first two rely too much on one particular muscle called flexor pollicis brevis. And that muscle is doing all the work trying to hold your pen that way. The better position relies on another thumb flexing muscle in conjunction with brevis called flexor pollicis longus, and this muscle connects all the way back in your forearm. Next thing, use your whole arm, not just the wrist. It makes sense, doesn't it? Just try to use all the joints and all the muscles you can rather than the small group of muscles that you're already using around your thumb and wrist. If this is getting too tricky, you can try taping your wrist with a classic sports tape method. I'll leave a link in the description of how to do that. And this can limit the wrist's movement so that you can draw with your arm a little bit more freely and practice doing this. Next thing, how to massage your arm. You want to be able to massage a couple of muscles in that key sore area in your palm. Flexor pollicis brevis and adductor pollicis. To massage them, you can just pinch that web space between your thumb and your finger and roll your fingers through that area. You can use a pocket physio. And you can see me using it here, just pinning it into the sore area and moving my thumb up and down, known as a pin and stretch technique. Pocket physios wouldn't be too hard to carry around in your pencil case. Or if you're desperate, you can use the blunt end of a pen. Next thing, you want to stretch your whole hand and forearm. You want to pull your fingers upwards and count to 20 to 30 seconds, and then fingers downwards and again count to 20 to 30 seconds. Massaging the forearm muscles is also perfectly viable. This is important because several of the muscles that control your hand movements link up as far back as your elbow. Next thing, we want to strengthen flexor pollicis longus. This muscle is important because it hooks up all the way back in your forearm and its tendon goes right to the tip of your thumb. It's the one that's going to give your thumb that curve to it rather than that collapsed sort of shape. To do this, you want to train your thumb so that the furthest tip of it and just the furthest tip of it can bend against resistance. Here you see me strengthening it on something called a power web but you can get away with just an elastic band. Now, if this is getting tricky, you can try a sports thumb tape method. Again, I'll leave a link in the description. This tape method would block the movement of that first joint and allow it to sit in a more neutral position while you practice using the further tip of your thumb. This tape method could also be used if you're really struggling with thumb joint pain while writing. Next thing, think about your wrist position. A muscle called flexor digitorum profundus loses a lot of its leverage on your fingers when your wrist is tilted up too far or down too far. You're sacrificing finger power for the sake of having your wrist in those wonky positions. Be mindful of where it is, and this could be where you want to use that sports tape I mentioned earlier again to keep your wrist in a neutral position. Now to sum all these things up, we've just created a warm-up plan for you, haven't we? We've gone through a few things that you can work on every time you sit down and are about to start writing to try and get everything working as well as it can. We can't take away the factors that are making your thumb sore, which is the increased load of writing, but we can at least manage it in the meantime. Links to the items that you've seen me use in this video can be found in the description. If you feel like you need some extra help in managing thumb or wrist related pain as a student or someone who has to write a lot, you're more than welcome to contact the clinic. We'd be more than happy to discuss things with you. Until then, best writing, best of health.